Today we're going to give you five gimbal transition ideas and we're going to use our DJI Ronin S to do it. DJI is a sponsor of this video, so big thanks to them. If you want to check out the Ronin S, click the link in the description. Let's get into it. Let's. As we mentioned, we are using the DJI Ronin S gimbal along with a few accessories. We have a focus motor, which allows us to control our lens's focus, iris, or zoom using the Ronin's hand wheel. We also have the cheese plate, which gives us more mounting options for accessories. We have ours set up so we can attach another monitor. We have the command unit attached, which allows us quick access to the Ronin settings, like access speeds, stiffness, and setting up time lapses. For today's shoot, we are using the Canon EOS R mirrorless camera with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens, and we'll be shooting everything at 60 frames per second so we can slow down the footage a little if we need. Even if you don't have these accessories, you can still pull off these transitions, so don't worry. For the first transition, we want to start up against a wall, orbit around Rachel, keeping her in the center of the frame. We then want to end the shot with the camera up against the wall on the other side. Ideally, you'll want to keep the same distance from your subject as you arc around them. For the second shot, go to your second location and perform a similar move, keeping the same distance from your subject as you did in the first shot. You can continue orbiting to the opposite side, but we're going to stop in the middle. For this next transition, Rachel is holding an instant film photo that we'll zoom into to take us to the next shot. Just walk in nice and steady and try to have the instant film end up covering your entire lens for the smoothest transition. This is where our lens motor really comes in handy. We're using it to control the zoom of our lens. Simply walk back with your camera while zooming in with your lens. It can be tricky to pull off as a solo operator, so it may take you a few tries to get the pacing of the camera move and zoom just right. It should give you that classic vertigo effect. Then, at your second location, perform another zolly. We think it looks best if you do a similar move, in this case, zooming in while walking back. This way, the background of both your shots will be moving in a similar fashion. If you don't have a lens motor, the next best option is to shoot at 4K. Then in post, you can scale the footage in the opposite direction of the camera move. For instance, if we back away from our subject, we can zoom in with our footage. The 4K gives us the resolution we need to make it happen. To do a 360 roll transition, we'll make a quick adjustment to the Ronin settings. Now with the Ronin held at waist level straight out in flashlight mode, we can use a joystick to do a roll. In the second location, we'll do another 360 roll while moving forward, ensuring it's rolling the same direction as the first shot. We ended our 360 roll shot with a pan to the right, so for our studio shot of the window, we are going to walk back from the window and pan right. All right, now that you saw how we shot it, we're gonna show you how we put it all together in post-production. In After Effects, we accomplished the speed ramp by using time remap and just setting a few keyframes. You can also do this in Premiere or Final Cut if you prefer. Now we need a little motion blur to really sell this effect. Let's create an adjustment layer, and for this I like radial blur, but you can also use a directional blur or something similar. We can then make a mask on the adjustment layer of where our subject is, and then subtract that mask. And that way our subject won't get blurred. Now in After Effects, there are a lot of ways to composite our next shot into the photo. We recommend trying the 3D Camera Tracker in After Effects first. Just select your clip and in the Tracker window, select Track Camera. Once it's done, make sure your button for Mask and Shape Path Visibility is enabled. Then make sure the 3D Camera Tracker is selected in your Effect Controls window. Now you can see all of your tracker markers. We want to find at least three trackers on the instant photo. Just hover your mouse over the points, and once you find markers that will work, right click and select Create Solid in Camera. Now hide the new solid layer, but with it selected, draw a mask using the pen tool where you want your next shot to be.
then show the solid layer and scrub through the timeline. If the solid starts to drift from the photo, use position keyframes to realign the solid to the photo. Now we can drop in our next clip and make it a 3D layer. We can then copy the position values from the solid and paste them into the position values on our next clip. Let's now move the clip to be directly underneath our solid layer. Now under Track Matte, we'll select Alpha Matte. Now we can scale down our footage and reposition it within this instant film frame. We can add a little motion blur to the footage and we should be good to go. In post-production, we just did a speed ramp on the first clip as the roll starts. Once it went 180 degrees, we brought in our second clip starting just past 180 degrees. We also speed ramped it to match the speed of the first clip. Now on both clips, we're going to add the effect CC Repetile. We're going to increase the amount to about 200 on all of the parameters. And then we'll select Unfold. This will cover up any dark edges caused by the blurring, which we'll do next. Now let's add an adjustment layer and add radial blur. We'll select the type to rotate. Then we'll just keyframe the blur amount to increase as our shot reaches 180 degrees and then start to decrease. In After Effects, we can track the footage of the last clip into the spot where the window is, similarly to how we did our second transition with Instant Film. We just used a 3D camera tracker and made some adjustments where our solid starts to drift from the window. In this case, instead of keyframing the position, we keyframed our mask path so that stayed within the four corners of the window. Then we dropped our footage of the previous clip in, making it a 3D layer, pasting the position and rotation data from the solid layer, dropping it beneath our solid layer, and then selecting alpha mat for the track mat. We can then make any final position and scale tweaks to the footage and we should be good to go. We can nest all of our work by selecting all of the layers and choosing Layer Precompose. Now we can do any speed ramps and scaling to the entire composition. Thanks for watching. We hope you found these transition tips to be useful. As always, we just like to remind you that transitions are just icing on the cake. Cake is a good story. Thanks to DJI for sponsoring this video. If you want to get your hands on our favorite gimbal, the Ronin S, click the link in the description. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Like and subscribe and comment and notif notify your parents. Cake equals good story. Let's get, get into, into it. it. All right, well, let's get into it. Did it do?